Lenses. Nights find me chasing daylight where the sun never sets. In my eyes, time like life is dressed in beautiful colors, unified and fragmented, as bold memories and rainbows longing to take shape. In daylight, a friendly darkness lingers, it embraces me, it renews me with constant companionship. In my eyes, dreams hold my hand, they point me to the stars. I watch them swing idly on embers of sunlight bathed in raindrops of tiny water strokes painted on a warm canvas in my mind. Where is the sun? What has become of that moonlit stars, the scented raindrops, the beautiful flowers, the sweet nectar that once dawned in my eyes? Today, I watched you stare at my face as if I were a puzzle for you to sculpt. I felt you study me as if I were a vague display piece, an awkward sculpture propped up against a craggy looking glass waiting to be perfected for the unveiling. But behind my eyes lie talents, a hunger, experiences, desires I'm not yours to fix. I heard you search your mind with tipsy curiosity as you mind your soul for warmth. But you need not worry. Time has kissed my face and soothed my cheeks with dreams, flowing gently like a cool evening's dew tumbling in slow motion. Daylight finds me again, pondering a world where your lenses finally cast me not as different, but simply as me. Can you hear the tiny squeak of little Mo's cart? Its rhythm circles like the sound of the sparrow singing, I see you over and over. Little Mo sang the words above the parroting of his wheel. Between the edge of the great green lawn and the border of the afternoon, little Mo sank into the long dark tunnels of his best friend Petri. There was barely a sound except for the echoing of I see you. I see you, I see you, bouncing against the damp walls. Petri had spent the whole morning arranging and rearranging for the arrival of his best friend. He brought out his finest pillows, his pile of books, and a silver cup for the flower that Little Mo would always bring on each visit. When Little Mo arrived, they spoke about the cooler weather, about lawns, and how enjoyable light dusting can be. As with every visit, they soon sat down while Petri started to read softly from the pages of a small green book. People have 10 to 40 moles and they can fade away and even change shapes. It's important to know how the, know the, and little mole leaned forward. Go on, please. Little mole? Yes, Pat? I need your help. Come sit next to me. Petri turned the book to Little Mole. I cannot see this word. It's blurry. Can you read it for me, please? Pet, I can see it, but I don't know how to read. Petri patted the head of his friend, and they both sat in silence, enjoying the scent of the beautiful flower. The next week, Petri spent the whole morning arranging and rearranging for the arrival for his best friend. He brought out his finest two pillows and a silver cup for the bright flower that Little Mole would bring on each visit, but no book. When Little Mole arrived, they placed the flowers in the silver cup and sat in silence. Little Mole, can I ask you something? Yes, Pat. Do you ever feel sad? Little Mole shook his head from side to side. No, I don't think so, no. They both sat very still, and Little Mole's whiskers began to shake just a little bit. Pet, he said, looking to the eyes of his friend. Yes, Little Mole? It's not true, what I said. Sometimes I do feel sad. Petri patted the head of his friend and sighed. 
Little Mole stayed for a little bit and then abruptly left, knowing exactly what he must do. Early the next morning, Little Mole tied together his beloved toothbrushes and pulled them across green lawns and tall fields to the busy streets where the mole could make a fair trade. Little Mole, after some time, found a shop window full of eyeglasses and chip dishes. He untied his, un his toothbrushes and walked through the door to a slow mole behind a dirty glass counter. Hi, I'm Mole. How can I help? I'd like to trade these in for a pair of your best eyeglasses, please. Mole looked at the green brush and then the purple one. I'll take the purple one, but why would I need two of them? What can I get in return? The slow mole waddled back into the back room and brought a pair of old glasses held together with yellowing tape. Try these on. Thank you, sir. Now can you see me? I see you, Little Mole said, and left with his only toothbrush and a pair of broken eyeglasses. The next week, Petri was slouching on an old chair when Little Mole arrived. There was no silver cup, there were no fine pillows, and no books. Pet, I brought you something. You shouldn't have. Please, fetch a book. Petri, slightly confused, left for a moment and returned with the small green book. Little Mole let his friend settle back into his chair and handed him the eyeglasses. These are for you, Pet. Little Mole leaned forward as Petri placed the glasses on his nose and opened the book. Go on, Pet. Petri looked down at Little Mole as his whiskers began to shake just a little bit. I'm so sorry. These don't really work, it's all still very blurry. They both sat in silence with neither bothering to mention that Little Mole forgot to bring a flower. Little Mole went through everything he owned and knew with his heart that his black leather boot was both precious and priceless and set out in the morning through green lawns and tall fields. Little Mole entered the shop as the slow mole looked up from his book. I'd like to trade these in for your finest pair of eyeglasses. The slow mole put down his book and inspected the boot. But what am I going to do with one shoe? I'm so sorry, I can't make a trade. The slow mole felt bad, so he let little mole pick any book he chose to take home. When he got home, little mole opened the book and noticed that it did not seem to be the same language as in Petri's books. The lines and marks were so pleasing that it seemed to make some sort of sense. That night he began to teach himself to read, and day after day and night after night he fell into the spell of those black marks on the yellow paper and forgot to visit his friend Petri. Petri became worried when Little Mole stopped visiting, and early one morning set out across yellow fields and green lawns to the hill where his friend lived. Much to his surprise, he found Little Mole sitting outside with a yellow book by his side. They spoke about the warmer but rainier weather, about lawns and the merits of exercise. They both sat down in the sun, and Little Mole opened up the book and began to hum the most beautiful song that Petri had ever heard. When the song came to its end, they both sat in silence. Then Petri gave his friend a pat on his head and said, Go on, again, please. <laughs>